In this project, we've got an escape room. So an escape room is a series of puzzles that you have to solve in order to get out of a locked room. So our character, Trisha, um, will swivel around and face the cursor. And when I click, she goes to that position. And you'll notice there's some there's four markers, uh, which I just use a, a yellow ball to, to mark. Um, when you visit them, you get different messages. So this one gives you a hint. It tells you to turn on the TV. So I go to the TV next. And then my next hint is to go to the nightstand, which reveals the key that allows me to escape the room. So if I hadn't done those in the right order, uh, I wouldn't have been able to, to uh, solve the puzzle. So, for example, if I start over again, if I tried to go to the, if I tried to skip a step and go right to the TV, um, nothing would happen because I, uh, I don't know what channel to, to put the TV on. Uh, use your imagination. So um, you'll also notice that there's a variable up top uh, called steps completed, and as you complete steps you'll see that it changes. So we've, we uh, visited the magazine, and then we did the TV. So after the message goes away, we, we, cut, we add on to that. And that helps the, um, the program uh, make us fo follow the steps in order uh, so that we can't just skip to the end. So let's see how this was made. So let's start by choosing a backdrop. This particular backdrop I uploaded. And we're going to change our sprite out. I chose Trisha because it's a top view. And I'm going to scale her down a little bit from 100 to maybe 50 so that she looks like she fits in the room. Let's just get her moving around the room and then we'll start adding clues and um, gradually we'll get to the, uh, the finished product. So when we click the flag, we want everything to start. Um, so what's going to happen is she's going to point towards the mouse pointer. Uh, as I move the mouse pointer around, she's going to face the mouse pointer. So she has to keep doing that over and over again. So we're going to use the forever control. Point towards mouse pointer. Okay, so let's test that out and see if it does what we think. So I move the mouse cursor around and she's facing the mouse cursor. So that is working the way I want it to. The next thing we want her to be able to do is to travel to different points of the room. If I click, um, she doesn't move, obviously. She's just pointing towards the cursor. So if the mouse is clicked, we want to go towards that position. So we want to use an if. And we're going to use mouse down. And then glide. We don't want to glide to a random position. We want to glide to the mouse pointer. And I think I used two seconds to make it a, not too fast. Let's give it a try. And it's working pretty nice. So the first clue was at the magazine, and I used a sprite that looked like a ball. And when you click that sprite, Trisha is going to go to it, but it's also going to make a little blurb that gives you a hint. So when this sprite is clicked, we're going to say something. And that is.
is right here. We don't want the blurb to stay there permanently, so we're going to set it to like three seconds. And we'll put our hint here. So let's see if that works. Oh, yeah, we have to put the ball next to the magazine and make it smaller, not too small. So when you click on it, it makes the hint and she is able to move towards it. So we're going to do the same thing for the TV. And I'm going to scale that to 20 as well. And when this sprite is clicked, we're going to give another hint. Okay, so let's test it out. So we've got the mess, the magazine hint, and we've got the TV hint. What if we were to click the TV first? Hmm, that's not what we want to happen. We want to make it so that the the person playing the game has to do the magazine first and then the TV second. So we need a way of checking to see if they have already visited the magazine. And we're going to do that by keeping track using the variable. So remember in our demonstration, we saw a variable being used. And so we're going to make a variable and we called it steps completed. And this is going to keep track of all the steps we've, we've done. So after we have visited the magazine, what we're going to do is record that in our variable. So we're going to use our steps completed variable. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add on to it. Well, we're going to we're going to change it to um, magazine. So we've clicked on the the ball and we've got the message and now the variable is going to change value after the message goes away. So let's try that again. And we can see that the variable has changed. It now contains the word magazine. So after that happens, um, we're going to get to the TV. And we only want the TV to happen if we, we only want the TV step to be completed if we've already been to the magazine. So. if steps completed K 
contains magazine. Can we turn on the TV? So let's give that a try and see if that works. Well, actually, we're going to see one problem here now. Our variable already has the word magazine in it, even though we've just clicked start. So that's actually a problem because uh, when we start the game, we want it actually to be blank. So let's go back and when the flag is pressed, we can set the variable to be empty. So let's try that again. So now I'm going to press stop and I'm going to press start. So now we're starting off empty. We visit the magazine and then we visit the TV. And so we can just add some more steps along the way. And so we're told to look in the nightstand. We will add another clue to the nightstand. And so when this is clicked, We're going to check to see that we've gone to the TV first. So, does steps completed contain TV? And after we visit the TV, we have to make sure that we add TV to that variable. So, we're going to set the variable. We're not going to set it to just TV because then we would lose magazine. We're going to we're going to add on to it. So we're going to use this join operator, which basically says add it on to the end of what's already there. So we take our variable steps completed, and we set it equal to itself plus TV. So now when we go to the nightstand, we want to make sure that we've already visited the TV. And then we're going to give another message. And again, we're going to repeat the pattern by adding on to the variable. And for the last clue, and at this point, uh, we have won the game.